but we've changed fundamentally. We've turned the corner. Broadband planning is now a part of American life. Now, we've got lots of battles yet and lots of important issues ahead of us, but we are talking about these things. We have huge battles ahead of us on where to get the extra spectrum that we need. The FCC, as part of its plan, will, uh, will recommend that we get more spectrum. They probably want to take it from broadcasters. We have a universal service program that has, over the years, funded telephone service. And there are lots of entities around the country with a lot of political clout who are using those funds for phone service when we could be using those funds for broadband services and the broadband could be used to provide voice services. So we've got huge battles ahead in universal service. We've got lots of issues in a lot of different areas. And fundamentally, fundamentally, we've got a clash of points of view of the future. There are many people with a stake in the world as we know it who are who think in terms of principles as we know it, and then there are others, and, and those are uh, primarily uh, folks who have a business case that works, who have uh, stockholders or constituents who look to them to be profitable or to continue to uh, fulfill expectations along traditional lines and who don't see a way to get those business models to work in a transitional world. And then we have others like the Googles who see a different world. The one side uh, focuses on how to distribute shortage. The other side looks for how you work with a model of plenty. They, they, they focus on ways to give service away or to charge the least amount and make their revenues in other ways. And they're, they're, both, they're both, I think, legitimate and both flawed models. And we are evolving. And somewhere along the way, we will find ways uh, to to, to synthesize from those two something that really works for the future. We darn well better if we're going to remain a competitive country. Other countries, the Swedens, the Asian countries, have invested massive amounts of public funds and tax credits and loans and various other things into their broadband networks because they see it as being critical infrastructure for the future. We haven't made anywhere near a tiny Dent in doing that on a national scale. Maybe we never will, but here's one guy who'll be working toward uh, pushing us uh, toward getting that. Now, uh, stimulus program, I know that uh, many of you are very interested in what stimulus funds could come to the, to the uh, uh, communities here or communities across the country. Our stimulus program very modest at first. We had a number of terms that needed to be defined, unserved, underserved, that were defined in very restrictive ways. On top of that, ways of demonstrating those depended on databases that weren't publicly available. Uh, the process was very cumbersome. Uh, still, despite all of that, for the $4 billion available, uh, some 2,200 applications were made. Uh, for funds totaling $28 billion, in other words, $7 of requests for every dollar of uh, funds sought or available. And um, now uh, NTIA RUS uh, is evaluating those original uh, first round proposals. Uh, we understand that the first 18 winners will be announced sometime in December and on a rolling basis after that. Uh, NTIA and RUS have also uh, recently issued a request for information on how to improve the program, how to make it easier for applicants to file, uh, how to look at the definitions and maybe uh, broaden them, how to go from things like uh, uh, advertise to actual with uh, validation, 
I think personally there will be improvements. I don't anticipate there will be major improvements in that kind of thing. But interestingly, RUS and NTIA also are asking bigger questions. They're saying, should we refocus the whole program so that what we invest now are large projects, regional projects with multiple communities involved, multiple users of the same infrastructure, multiple beneficiaries, health care, transportation, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of talk at the FCC and RUS and NTIA about that sort of thing. They know they're not going to find money anytime soon to put fiber everywhere, to every address. So what they're thinking about is how to drive fiber deeper into communities through their schools, their libraries, their health care facilities, and others. How to use that kind of investment to make it easier for everyone then to go the last mile from there. And that's where I think we're going to see the 